recognizing exceptions to the octet rule. So there are three circumstances under which that central atom may not have eight electrons around them. The first one is where we have odd electron molecules. OK, so that is fairly easy to spot because when you add up the valence electrons you're expecting in your molecule or your molecular ion, you're going to end up with literally an odd number, as in 5, 7, 9, 11, 13 electrons. So there is no way that you compare an odd number of electrons, right? So those are usually pretty obvious when you start totting up the valence electrons, which you always do for any Lewis structure. That's your first step. The other exception to the octet rule is where you have an incomplete octet on your central atom. And again, you probably might not realize this at first unless you literally have less than eight valence electrons in your total structure at all. Um, but you you might find that when you're trying to complete the octet of the central atom and you've converted any um, lone pairs to bonding pairs that you're able to do so and that central atom still doesn't have a complete octet, then you've run out of electrons and there's nothing else you can do. You can't just magic electrons from somewhere. Um, so incomplete octets are very common for group 13 elements like boron, aluminium, uh, gallium, etc. Uh, beryllium as well um, in group two. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. And if you're not sure, you can always check formal charges, right? And formal charges can make you feel comfortable that everything is a-okay. So the one that most people find a little bit tricky to spot is what we call an extended octet or sometimes hypervalent, uh, which tells you all you need to know that there are more than eight valence electrons around your central atom. So this occurs sometimes only in period three or below. So you're particularly looking over in the P block because those tend to be your central atoms. Most commonly uh, elements like silicon, phosphorus, sulfur and chlorine um, or like further along the periodic table than those guys right there. OK, um, so the explanation is that they are bigger for a start so you can fit more stuff around them and they are closer in energy where their valence electrons are to the the d orbitals in terms of energy so remember we talked about how like the 4s and the 3d are like really close in energy that kind of thing right and you've probably seen the energy levels get closer and closer as you sort of go up in terms of values of n um so they are able to access these low energy d orbitals in order to expand their octates and make more than four bonds so the dead giveaway that you have an extended octet is when you have um a molecular formula that has more than four bonds, right? More than four things attached to the central atom. Like if you have phosphorus uh, pentafluoride, for example, oh, it's got to five, form five bonds to chlorine. So even if they're all single bonds, five bonds are two electrons, each is 10 electrons, okay? <laughs> so um, just watch out for that. Uh, another time that you see extended octets, again, is when you, in period three or below, and it's to minimize formal charges. Sulfur likes to do this quite a bit. So even though it's only forming four bonds, sometimes if you check the formal charges, they're not minimized, and then you can convert lone pairs to bonding pairs and expand the octet as sulfur, and it will lower the formal charge. Anyway, so let's check these guys, okay? So first thing you gotta do for all of these structures is add up how many valence electrons you have, of course. So phosphorus is in group 15, so has five valence electrons. Oxygen, of which there is uh, four of them, is in group 16 with six valence electrons, and there's a plus three charge. So we're gonna have to add three electrons to the total. So six, 12, 24 plus eight is 32 valence electrons. So the first thing you gotta do is check that this matches. So add up all your bonds, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Then all your lone pairs, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. So we've got the right number of valence electrons, okay? Now we're going to check that phosphorus has a complete octet and it's got more than a complete octet. Look, it's got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 electrons around it. Ooh, is that okay? Well, yeah, where is phosphorus in the periodic table? is in uh, period three, right? So yeah, phosphorus can expand its octet. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, that is a reasonable structure because we've got the right number of valence electrons and phosphorus is allowed to have an expanded octet. All right, so next question, uh, aluminium chloride. So 
aluminium, group 13, three valence electrons, three chlorines. Each of them have seven valence electrons. So that is, uh, we have a total of 24 valence electrons we're looking for here. All right, so uh, let's have a count up of what's been drawn. Two, four, six in bonds, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And that lone pair on the aluminium takes us to 26. So that is actually wrong, okay? Not the correct number of valence electrons. We count them up and we shouldn't have 26. We should have 24, okay? Um, so what we should have done, or whoever drew this Lewis structure should have done, is not put that lone pair of electrons on that central aluminium. This is one of those examples where um, an incomplete octet on the aluminium is absolutely fine, okay? So we... I'm not going to form chlorine aluminium double bonds or any of that kind of nonsense. We're going to be okay with aluminium having an incomplete octet. Now I'm going to have to scooch this down a little bit. Hello. All right. NH2 plus. Um, so if we top up our valence electrons, nitrogen is in group 15, so it has five. And each hydrogen has one valence electron. It's got a plus one charge, which means it has lost an electron. So just remember, if you've got a cation, you've got to subtract off an electron from the valence electrons. That's a timely reminder there. So five, six, seven, minus one is six valence electrons. Uh -huh. So again, we, we're going to have to have an incomplete octet because we don't even have eight valence electrons in our whole structure. So if we have a look at this, what has been drawn here, we've got two, four, six. So the number of valence electrons is good here. Okay, so um, what else have we got here? And there's a lone pair on the nitrogen there. So I would go ahead and say that that is actually just fine. Okay.